Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us into this uh, session. Today, we will talking about uh, we'll discussing the paper Visual ChatGPT, talking, drawing, and editing with uh, Visual Foundation models. Mohip, uh, Cameron, and me, Javier Torres, will lead this uh, presentation. Next, please. We prepare uh, this agenda. Uh, first, we will do a brief introduction, then explain uh, the foundation of, of uh, Visual ChatGPT, uh, some uh, explain the experiments, uh, some limitations with the Chat G uh, Visual ChatGPT, conclusions, and we will open a session to answer questions from the public. Next, please. Thank you. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, if you have uh, interacted with uh, ChatGPT, uh, you should know that this model, it's unable to handle visual inf information. So due to this, uh, the authors propose this uh, visual ChatGPT in order to close this gap and propose a model able to handle uh, both language and visual information. The author proposed some consideration which can be interpreted as uh, research questions. Uh, these are, uh, could we build a chat GPT like a system that also supports image understanding and generation? What if we want to incorporate modalities beyond languages and images like videos or voices? And would it be necessary to train a totally new multimodality model every time when it comes to new modalities or functions? To answer this question, let's dive in into the chat GPT. And uh, here we present uh, in this graph, like a graphical a description of Visual ChatGPT. It uh, basically is uh, founded on a prompt manager, which uh, called some Visual Foundation models. So these uh, Visual Foundation models are just uh, uh, the ones that have uh, ChatGPT to handle visual information, such as images. Uh, for instance, we have here a pix to pix which is uh, helpful to generate realistic images or uh, uh, BRIP, which is uh, also useful to uh, identify text uh, on images. So for, for instance, in this uh, graph, we have a, a user query, which is uh, please uh, generate a red flower conditioned on the predicted depth of this image and then make it like a cartoon step by step. So the prompt manager receives this uh, user query and then we'll call a visual uh, foundation model which is according to this uh, query. And then uh, what the prompt manager does, it just translate this into a language uh, or to text to pass through ChatGPT. And then ChatGPT will uh, perform the, the following task. In this case, at first it uh, uses uh, the uh, initial image, in this case, the, the yellow uh, flower, then make it like a sketch or a draw, then make it red and uh, finally produce uh, the cartoon. And as you see, the output is uh, the red flower as a cartoon. And also uh, a test here, you are, where else can I help? Can I help you? So uh, this program uh, manager supports uh, some uh, specific function for, for, for instance, uh, explicitly tells ChatGPT the capability of each uh, visual foundation models and also it specified the, the input output formats. As well, it converts, uh, as I said before, uh, the uh, different visual information from the images to uh, language formats in order to help ChatGPT understand. For example, it uh, uses uh, this uh, input image and uh, extract the depth of the image and also the mass matrix. And uh, it also it's helpful to uh, handle the history, priorities, priorities and conflicts of, of different BFMs. Next, please. Here, uh, we present like uh, the uh, formal description or uh, formulation of uh, Visual ChatGPT. Let's as uh, be a dialogue system with n question and answer uh, pairs, and this is a uh, formulator as uh, shows here. Um, let's a j equals one sub i b the final output from the uh, mobile. So it interacts, the chat GPT will interact with the prompt manager, which will take uh, some inputs. And these are the here, which are the uh, system principle, the 
uh, visual foundation models, the history of di dialogue, the uh, user query, the history of reasoning, the intermediate answers, and the uh, well, this, uh, the plan manager, which is, is uh, the one that handled each one of these uh, foundations. The system principle, it's uh, basically uh, like a, a set of rules uh, for visual GPT. It should be like a sensitive to image file names and also should be able to handle images instead of generating the results based on the, on the chat history. The visual foundation models are just uh, a combination of various uh, foundation models. There are in total 22 foundation models, visual foundation models. And it's one uh, of like uh, a specific functionality. The history of a dialogue, it's uh, like uh, to keep the, uh, the record of what operation have been performed. Um, the user query is uh, as, uh, described in the uh, previous graph. It's uh, like uh, the input from the user. From the user. Then we have uh, the history of reasoning, which is also like a have a record of uh, the questions and also the operation that the, the model have performed. And uh, the intermediate answer, which is just like uh, if it's needed and invo invoke a, a visual foundation model or produce the final output. Next, please. Okay, so now let's uh, discuss about this uh, System principles. Visual uh, ChatGPT uses uh, well. It's a system that integrates uh, different uh, visual foundation models to understand uh, visual information and also generate uh, the corresponding answers. And in order to uh, perform this task, uh, some uh, prompts are needed to pass to ChatGPT. The purpose of these uh, prompts are uh, bas basically this. Uh, they can describe the role of Visual Chat GPT, which is uh, assist with a range of text and visual related tasks, such as uh, VQA, image generation and editing. Also uh, use prompts to uh, explain the accessibility of the Visual Foundation models. As I said, there are uh, in total 22 Visual Foundation models. So this is described uh, through prompts. Uh, the file sens sensitivity name, uh, the file name sensitivity, which is uh, just like a, in order to avoid ambiguity and also prevent the model to uh, do hallucination. So the model is uh, strict about file name, and to do uh, to do this, uh, they use uh, unique uni universal unique uh, identifier. The chain of thought it's. Uh, an additional also uh, foundation from this uh, visual ChatGPT, uh, which is uh, just like a technique that helps the model to uh, help the site and leverage and dispatch uh, the different BFNs. The reason of uh, format extremeness, uh, this is uh, referring to uh, trigger a new BFN if it's needed or just uh, output the final uh, response. And the reliability, uh, this refers to guide uh, ChatGPT to leverage uh, BFMs preferentially. In this case, uh, it refers to, for example, first use uh, BFMs to make like uh, the draw for, for uh, the case of the, the red flower, then make it red. And after that, use another foundation mode, visual foundation mode to uh, make it a cartoon. Next, please. The prompt managing of uh, the foundation models. This just uh, describes the name of the visual foundation models with an abstract of the overall function for each uh, visual foundation model. Also describes the scenario where each model should be used and specify the required format for each uh, BFM as well as uh, produce uh, true prompts, some examples to uh, better understand how to use uh, BFMs under our uh, input and deal with uh, complex queries. Next, please. Here we have uh, prompt managing user query. This is uh, based on two uh, aspects. The generate unique file name, which I uh, mentioned before, uh, this is, for example, once the model receives an input uh, from a user acquired, it establishes a name and a unique identifier. 
to perform the following task and also use um, a kind of prompt to uh, force the BFM to thinking. In this case, they use, uh, do I need to use a tool? If yes, uh, they will uh, call a, a BFM or if uh, not, it just will produce the final answer. Uh, next, please. Now we have here uh, the prompt managing of the foundation model outputs. This uh, refers to the intermediate answer here. Uh, Visual ChatGPT will call other BFMs for further operation if needed until reach the, the ending condition or give uh, a feedback to, to the users. Some foundation from this uh, model outputs or intermediate answer is uh, the generate chain chained file name. This is useful to uh, avoid uh, hallucination and keep in, like, uh, in mind the operation that have been performed. So once uh, the user provide an image, uh, I use a unique identifier is assigned. And also if an operation is uh, conducted, this will be attached to the name of the file in order to keep a, a record and also help a, a chat GPT to understand the instructions. Call for more uh, BFMs. Uh, this is uh, like a, this uh, prompt. Do I need to use uh, a BFMs to solve the, the current problem? And ask for more details. It's uh, another feature that this model has to uh, help chat GPT and also ask for uh, more details when uh, a user provide a complex question. Next. Okay, so now uh, my uh, teammate Mohi will continue with the presentation. Uh, hello everyone. So based upon the design of the waiver, certain experiments were also carried out the setup of which it was uh, the chat GPT text da Vinci uh, version specified and Langchain foundation models from hugging face transformers mask formers and control net were taken a total of 22 vfms were uh, used for the testing and they required four nvidia v100 gpus the vfms numbers can be changed if uh, other testing is carried out but then the gpus would also have to be uh, changed the maximum length of the chat history was bound to 2000. Uh, the slide shows a look at a conversation that the visual chat GPT has with the user. We can see the employment of what we discussed earlier in the form of integration of the textual uh, as well as image exchange in the form of multiple VFMs. So here, starting off, we can see that the entire response is based on text. But as we move on, we have a visual for, uh, responses as well, which have been uh, output by the various VFMs that have been uh, integrated into the visual chat GPT. To validate the effectiveness of the system principle prompts, that is the basic structure of the chat GPT, different parts of that prompt were removed sequentially and the performance of the uh, visual chat GPT was then monitored, which showed a certain uh, capacity of degradation with the removal of each VF, uh, aspect. The first is the file name sensi sensitivity, which means that the model should be able to effectively point to a specific image based on the user query. So the, in this example, we have provided an image to the model, which uh, it has received. And then we ask it to generate an, another image of, the, uh, of a cat by itself, which uh, it also was successfully uh, done. However, in the third questions, we asked it to generate the depth image from the figure that I gave you. So it refers to the image that is the first one here that has been provided by the human. But once the file name sensitivity aspect was removed, it, did, it failed to refer to the image file name, but referred to the last image that was generated. However, in the second instance, it was correctly able to refer to the first image due to its unique uh, name uh, and file name sensitivity 
uh, it was able to generate as required. The second uh, is reading, which is the ability of the model to reason with itself in a logical manner to either return the result as a final response or call in multiple VFMs in order to move towards the result that has been required by the user. So in this example, we asked the model to generate a Chinese watering painting. However, the model could not reason effectively and thus could not call in the VFMs to generate the response that we wanted. However, once we did have the reasoning format integrated, it was able to generate the uh, image specified. The visual chat GPT as a language model may confuse the results based solely on textual response as well. We need to understand that the visual chat GPT is based on the chat GPT. It is a modification of the chat GPT. So in order to better understand, uh, understand it, in the left pane of the example given, uh, we asked the model to generate a rose, uh, a figure of a rose, which it was able to achieve. However, in the second prompt, we asked it something entirely different from the rose, that is the uh, things, some things about sunflowers, which it also uh, was successfully able to do. However, in the third question, when we asked it to uh, tell something about the image specifically, it confused the last response with the previous response. So once this feature was enabled, the uh, in the right pane, the model was correctly able to refer to the first response uh, here. The next prompt is uh, quite simple. It refers to the ability of the model to call in, uh, call in multiple VFMs in succession to generate a response specified by the user in the prompt. As evident in the right pane, once we call, uh, call in the prompt, draw a figure of a big apple and use a pair to replace it, show the apple image and, and the pair image. It success, uh, successively called in uh, first generated image of the apple and then swapped that apple with the peer and generated both the response correctly. However, once the chain of thought was uh, removed, the uh, model failed to give the output that was desired by the user input. The next part of the experiment covers the prompt man management of the VFMs, that is the visual foundation models. The first uh, is the name prompt, which basically explains the purpose of a single VFM to the visual chat GPT. It tells whether a certain VFM will generate a new image, will convert it into a painting, and so on. In the example, we can see in the left pane that the model was not able to refer to the depth foundation model once we uh, provided it with the image and then asked uh, to predict the depth image. However, once we enabled this uh, name uh, pretext, by using the same prompt, we were able to generate the result as specified. The next prompt describes the specific scenarios where any VFM is to be used. It basically uh, maps out the purpose of a VFM. It can be uh, simply seen that once we uh, generated a dog image and make the above and asked it to make the image into a painting sort of a thing, it generated something entirely different. However, once we did specify the usage of the VFMs, we were able to convert it somewhat towards the result that we wanted. The next prompt, namely the input or outputs, defines the format which is accepted by any VFM as well as the format that it will generate as an output. Uh, in the left pane, once we disabled this feature and we asked the uh, VFM to draw a cat to replace a dog in the image, the uh, model was not able to correctly call in because the input out of formats was disabled. And so though it uh, registered that something was to be done, but it could not call in the exact model. However, once the same was uh, activated, it was correctly able to uh, 
generate a response. The last in the VFM prompt management is the op uh, example prompt. It, it simply provides a sample to the visual chat GPT uh, from which it can take direction to generate a further response. We can see with it being disabled or enabled, it's an optional prompt. So there isn't a lot of a difference. Only the, the difference only is among the arm colors here. So more or less, it is not a big difference. That, uh, that is the reason why they have uh, made it an optional prompt. Uh, the case study of the prompt management of user query is the next. These uh, basically refer, implies the video type generates a unique file name for each image. And this unique file name will be used throughout the conversation for reference or modification or anything. Once we disable this on the left pane, we can see that the same image is uh, renamed again, that is bird.png. And once we ask the image bird PNG black and white, it referred to the previous uh, or the first image. However, once we uh, generate a unique file name, we could specifically ask the model to make image so and so black and white to which it could refer to the previous image. If we swap the same name from the first one, we could uh, get a similar response from the first image as well. Uh, the next step basically ensures whether visual chat GPT really needs a tool for a specific task. This is the form of a thought which is added ahead of each question. This thought is not visible to the user, but this thought as covered earlier as well, that do I need to use the tool? So in the example left pane, we generate an image. And then uh, in the third uh, question, we asked it to convert it into a sketch format, scribble or sketch. Now the model did, uh, was able to understand that it needed to use some kind of VFM, but it could not click on the exact VFM that it needed to get the job done. However, in the right, uh, in the right pane, we can see that it was clearly able to refer to the uh, VFM that was required. The last is the case study of prawn man, uh, management of model outputs. The visual chat GPT is basically designed to interact in a sustained uh, and conversational manner with it being able to reference past actions in detail. In the left pane of the example, we can see that there is a past interaction by the user regarding images. And then a query is made based on a specific past image, but the response that the model generate is saved into an entirely new image file name. So we generated some question answer uh, variations previously. And then once the uh, file name, chain file name concept was disabled and we asked to generate an image based on a specified image, it did generate an image, but the name that it gave was entirely uh, generalized. However, once this feature is enabled, the model is able to generate the uh, image based on the specified prompt, but it renames that according according to a certain uh, format, which specified the specifies the original image, as well as the uh, depth to image uh, the VFM used, and then it references the new image. So this is critical for it to uh, connect the various dots during a conversation, and therefore we can. Uh, easily uh, refer to a, any single image at a later stage. The last example uh, is quite straightforward and it's just the ability of the model to seek clarification from the user to generate a response. For example, the uh, replace the cup in the image. Now it has asked which cup would you like to replace an image as there are three cups. So it does not have any ambiguity left and would be accurate in its result. There are certain limitations associated with the visual chat GPT. Uh, the foremost is that it relies heavily on the chat GPT to assign tasks and on VFMs to execute them. 
the performance of visual chippity is thus heavily influenced by the accuracy and effectiveness of these models entirely. Uh, visual chat requires a significant amount of prompt engineering to convert VFMs into language and make these model descriptions distinguishable. This can be uh, both time consuming as well as require a lot of resources. Uh, the third is that uh, the model is designed to, in general, it tries to decompose a complex task into several subtasks automatically. Thus, when handling a specific task, visual chargeability may invoke multiple VFMs, resulting in limited real-time capabilities compared to expert models specifically trained for a particular task. That is, it is going to be time-consuming, as it will have to go systematically from uh, one model to another, generating um, the required user uh, uh, prompt. The maximum token length in ChatGPT may limit the number of foundation models that can be used. If there are thousands or millions of foundation models, a pre-filter module may be necessary to limit the VFMs fed to the ChatGPT. Since there's an interaction between the visual, uh, visual aspects with the text format, and we need to convert those visual aspects into text format, therefore it is going to require a lot of uh, tokens. So the token length limitation may also uh, become a problem. The last is the ability to easily, uh, it's, its ability to plug and unplug foundation models may raise security and privacy concerns, particularly for remote models assessed by APS. So sensitive data should not be disclosed as is also uh, given a, a, as a disclaimer at the chat GPT side. So a similar disclaimer is also associated with the visual chat GPT uh, inputs. So as a conclusion, a visual chat GPT simply combines the chat GPT with the uh, VFMs or visual foundation models. This enables this model to interact in a textual uh, format while being able to understand and uh, give outputs of the uh, in visual format. Apart from the mentioned limitations, another concern that has been raised by the authors of, these, of the paper are that some generation results are unsatisfied due to the failure of VFMs and the instability of the prompt. Thus, one self, self correction mod, module is necessary for checking the consistency. Uh, between execution uh, execution of results and human intention. Uh, in order to uh, correct or improve the accuracy of the model further on, the authors of this paper are currently in the process of working in order to develop such a module, which would be able to verify the results before it is being finalized to be uh, provided as an output. Uh, that is all. Uh, now we are open to questions. We have a question on the chat. What would be the benefits to society with this uh, feature? I guess she uh, she's referring to Visual Chat GPT. Well, uh, there are there are many uh, benefits from this uh, Visual Chat GPT. The authors try to close the gap regarding with uh, the ability to process visual information. So now you can interact with this uh, Visual Visual Chat GPT and provide images and also receive answers as um, in the format of visual uh, information. So this uh, gap, let's say, has been closed and you as a final user will have the, the opportunity to use visual ChatGPT. <laughs> if you remember one of the example, it's just like, a, I'm not good drawing, so can you help me with that? So it's uh, an opportunity to you use this uh, visual ChatGPT to 
interact with and see uh, the functionalities of work with images. As well, with this uh, model, you will have the opportunity to generate images. So you can ask uh, for some, uh, you can provide an image and you can uh, ask uh, the visual ability to improve it and you can save time when you were working with images in the case, for example, that you are like, uh, or you need to generate some post or something. So this can be so helpful for that. Any other question? Okay, so if there is no more question, we will close this uh, session right now. I hope you have enjoyed this uh, presentation and we will look forward to have you in the future uh, sessions. Thank you, bye-bye.